All right, what's going on there, everybody? So this is going to be a really short and quick video um, about me getting the job at Valvoline. Um, I think I don't know if I know I don't I don't think I did mention this. So I got the job at Valvoline. Um, I got a call. I think it was yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. Almost two days ago now. Um, so I got a call yesterday. Um, my recruiter for Valvoline got in contact with me, offered me the position. Um, I agreed to it. Um, so I have the job at Valvoline, so that's great. Um, we're already making progress in terms of getting my experience with um, the automotive industry. Um, though I don't really expect me to really be doing a whole lot with this job out the gate. Um, just because it kind of seems like I'm a little overqualified for this job. Not completely, but in the sense that um, I know quite a bit about cars already. I know how to work on my own shit. Um, you know, I've done as extensive as changing a head gasket on my 98 Mustang. That's probably the most extensive thing I've ever done on a, uh, on a car. Um, you know, like I feel like I... I'm ready already to take on more responsibility probably by the time I've reached my three or four month mark at the company. Problem is I don't think they do anything as extensive as even changing brake pads for that matter or changing out rotors. Um, that's usually like a brake shops thing. Uh, so I don't know if I'll be with this company for very long because I already have a feeling I'm going to be lusting for more responsibility uh, just because it's beneath what I already know what to do or how to how to do uh, certain things um, I mean, it's pretty brain-dead work. You literally top off fluids change wiper blades rotate tires change oil I mean, that's not really a whole lot of technician work <laughs> um, I don't even really like calling it technician or lube technician because it's pretty brain dead easy shit um, not to say that I won't gain some experience from this job in the sense that um, you know looking at all the different new cars that come into the shop and understanding how they work and how they look uh, because I'm only really familiar with a lot of older cars I've ever really worked on cars from anywhere from like 2000 and nine ish to down to like 1990s kind of vehicles from like so 1990s to about 2009 is what I'm more familiar with in the year uh, cars in any way because once we start getting into about 2010 and newer and cars a lot of those vehicles are very in tune with the computers um, that's my biggest gripe that I have with cars is I'm not really into the whole electronics with cars I'm more into the mechanical aspect of them um, so you got a lot of cars that are becoming more driven by the computer and um, what I mean by that is the computer basically tells the engine to either speed up timing, decrease or retard timing and um, you know everything is relying on the computer in terms of how the engine operates these days. Um, it's, it's fascinating but both annoying in terms of your basic at home mechanic because trying to diagnose these types of cars becomes really a pain in the ass at the end of the day. Uh, that's what those fancy ass little like $3,000 um, scan tools do is they're supposed to help you kind of put you in the right direction in terms of diagnosing a vehicle. Um, but at the end of the day that they still don't tell you everything about the electronics in this in the car because you may think oh you have a bad oil gauge but then it turns out that it's actually um, like a, a bad uh, connection in line maybe maybe a rat chewed one of the electrical connectors and then you gotta fucking track that down and try to find it and that becomes a really big nightmare um, that's why I don't really like to fuck with electrical in cars but that's also why I want to go to school so I can get more educated in terms of the electronic aspect of a vehicle and how they are operating or how they're operated I should say um, but uh, yeah I'm already gonna probably want to take on more responsibility probably within the first six months of me being on the job I'm already probably gonna get bored and at that point I may look elsewhere, I may look at a dealership and see if um, they'll offer me any type of responsibility, like maybe changing brakes and rotors, um, and then maybe from moving up from there to maybe changing suspension, that would be pretty fucking cool. Um, hell, if I can at least get to be like a flat rate technician, like that would be 
that's some pretty decent money um, and you're doing some pretty cool um, not too extensive but you're doing some pretty good um, you're doing some pretty good uh, um, work on cars basically like I don't think flat rate technicians do anything as extensive as rebuilding an engine or um, rebuilding a transmission I could be wrong on that they might do some of that too uh, I believe what a flat rate technician does for the most part is they just change out you know like accessories on a car they may change a sensor a few sensors tracking down problems like that um, uh, suspension uh, Mm, I can't think of anything else. Maybe changing out a fuel pump. Anyways, you get the idea. Uh, that's the kind of work that I want to be doing, uh, that I know I'm capable of doing. Uh, it's just seeing all the different types of cars that come into a shop so I can familiarize myself with all the different new technologies that are on vehicles because obviously I need experience in terms of all the different new shit that's out there. Um, and getting familiar with that because I'm only really familiar with my Fords and familiar with my Mustangs and that's all I've ever known and how they look and how they run um, so that's what I'm kind of hoping to gain from this job is the experience of seeing different vehicles come in um, and uh, obviously too this is going to sound really stupid but I, um, I would like to know the different types of wiper blades that go on cars too because you get these wiper blades these days and they come with all these fucking attachments like all these different adapters and shit to fit on specific vehicles and it becomes really a, a big headache um, I had this problem with uh, a Chevy HHR and I had this problem with um, a, uh, one of the Honda Civics, like the common Civics that you see from the late 90s, early 2000s. Um, pretty pretty pain in the ass type of thing to work on. Um, and it makes you feel really stupid too, because you'll be sitting there fiddle-fucking with a wiper blade, even though <laughs> it almost like um, fucks up your knowledge uh, that you know about cars. Like, bro, you don't even know how to change out a wiper blade, but you, you don't have to do all this other shit. It's like, ugh. Um, so yeah, uh, what do I expect other than that from the job is the things that I fear about this job. Um, my biggest fears in any way, uh, working for this type of company, um, this type of position for that matter, uh, is management, bad management. I hope to Christ that I get into this job and I don't run into bad management because I've heard some horror stories where some management like, and this is like this for every job I've ever worked to because I know what they're talking about. I've dealt with it firsthand experience is having management that plays favoritism with certain employees. Uh, they may, even though you are busting your ass off and you are showing that you are more than capable of doing these types of tasks or whatever and you, you you're trying to prove yourself they end up promoting the guy next to you that ain't really doing jack shit but because he's buddy buddies and they get fucked up with the manager on the fucking weekends that he gets the promotion or he gets uh, uh, the, the next level responsibility even though he's probably more than not capable of doing that type of uh, task um, <laughs> so the favoritism there, I'm, I'm fearful of that. Um, the belittling or um, the, uh, I don't know how I, I put this. I guess that is the good, best word I can think of is basically being belittled of your intelligence in terms of um, what you actually know about cars. Management may try to undermine what you actually know and don't know about a vehicle. Um, you know, you may suggest something to the manager that you saw on a specific vehicle um, and uh, they just overlook it and disregard your advice um, as if like they know fuck all and you don't kind of thing. Uh, I don't want to deal with that type of headache. Um, there's some other shit with badge management. You, you guys have worked in the fucking shitty entry level positions of any type of job. You know how management can be in these types of jobs just because of that reason. So I don't really have to get into too much detail with that. Um, at least those of you that uh, may be as old as me, if not older, have dealt with bad management in your life. Oh, uh, what else? Uh, the vaccinations. I don't want to get too much into that. Just basically, I'm hoping. Uh, that the company doesn't um, start forcing vaccinations because if that starts happening I will be putting in my two weeks in like no fucking tomorrow hell I'll probably just quit right then and there and ask for my check um, <clears throat> um, 
yeah, so the vaccinations, um, I'm already feeling like the company's going to go that, that direction anyways, just because of the clear discrimination with those that are vaccinated and those that aren't. You have to wear a mask, they told me, within the company if you aren't vaccinated. I, I really don't agree with that. Um, and honestly, I think I'm still going to be looking for other jobs while I'm working at this location, just because that is really something I'm not really for. Um, but where you start drawing the line and start forcing vaccinations on your employees, that's just not right. Um, and that's where I draw the line and I will be hightailing it out of there. Um, I think it's clear discrimination that they do that and I might bring it up to management, but they're probably just going to look at me and just go, you don't like it? Well, fucking there's the door kind of shit, right? Because uh, at the end of the day, they, they can't do anything about it. It's a company-wide probably thing, you know. It's not just them that are doing it. It's a company-wide thing. It's corpor uh, corporate, essentially. Um, so, yeah, that's the things that I fear about the job, at least the only two things I really fear about the job. I'm hoping it's pretty lax, chill, um, and everybody kind of gets along and is willing to help me and is willing to... Um, you know, guide me through some things that I may not know. Um, it's really interesting because <laughs> I never knew, like, uh, see, I'm already starting to educate myself on my own end without even working this job yet. Uh, I didn't even know some oil pans had crush washers on the drain plugs. So I'm glad I know that knowledge because if I didn't have known that they needed a crush washer, then the oil would just be leaking like bucket loads out of the drain, pl uh, drain plug. So um, I've always ever dealt with cars that have drain plugs on them, and that's it. Like my Mustangs just have drain plugs. It's really weird that they have crush washers on them. I don't know why they don't just have the typical uh, just, just a plug, and that's it. Um, what else? Um... Uh, yeah, just, that's really what I hope to learn, honestly, is just getting familiar with all the different types of vehicles, um, getting familiar with wiper blades, I guess. <laughs> uh, I, I honestly think I'll probably still be applying elsewhere. I don't think I don't, I don't really want to work at Valvoline for no more than probably like a few months, to be honest. Um, it's just to get my foot in the door and say that I've worked at this place for a few months. Um, I want to try to get into a dealership as a lube technician, but I feel like that's a lot more harder without having school in your background, at least. Because um, at the end of the day, like, having, having school and having a, certificate, a certification, it doesn't mean shit in terms of your knowledge with cars. I think I may have mentioned this in my last video. Um, it's all about your hands-on experience. Uh, you could have a nice job and not even have an ASC certification. You could be like a master technician and not even have an ASC certification or uh, uh, even have ever gone to school. Um, but I would still like to go to school um, because I would like to learn history with it. I would like to get more familiar with the electronics aspect of cars since that's probably where I have the short end of the stick when it comes to uh, cars. Um, I also would like to know how to rebuild an engine. I would like to know how to rebuild a transmission because uh, automatic transmissions become really complicated. Um, so I'd like to know how to re rebuild those. Um, uh, so yeah, school, I still want to go to school. Um, I don't want to just, it, it would probably help if I go to school too because it would probably shave off the experience in terms of um, needed experience to basically move up in a company, right? So like, for instance, I come out of school, they may automatically give me um, a flat rate uh, technician position um, and then I could work my way up to within pretty quickly, I'd imagine, to start working on engine rebuilds or something more uh, extensive that gives me more responsibility. Um, I mean, I get it, you know, just because you came out of school, again, it goes back to you need to have hands-on experience, you need to be shadowing uh, technicians. It's kind of like nursing, you know, you got to shadow uh, doctors, you got to shadow um, people that have the experience, so that way you then learn and then you can then pass on that knowledge 
uh, to the next uh, newbie that comes behind you. <laughs> so um, that's uh, that's my goal in any way. And again, like I mentioned in my last video, I've never been more happy with my me moving forward with this decision. Um, I I'm glad that I made this deci this decision. Um, I'm just hoping it works out for me. Uh, I feel like I have it figured out. I have it planned. It's just raising the money um, and being ready uh, when that time comes, uh, at least for school in any way. Um, I'm probably going to be looking at trying to get into a dealership as a lube tech, though. I, I at least trying to get some more experience up there. If I can actually just move my way up into the company, say like Ford, I really want to work for Ford. I, I just, even though they have some really shady business practices, I really like Ford. Though, like my uncle says, don't don't give yourself the short end of the stick. Start applying at Dodge, Toyota. Um, I don't know what the other ones are. I can't think off the top of my head, but you get the point. Um, start just applying at different dealerships, seeing which position you're able to get. And sometimes you might even just be able to move your way up from a lube tech position to a flat rate. That'd be pretty nice. Um, and then you can still continue to go to school. And some tells me too, um, I, I think some dealerships offer this I may be wrong though uh, if I, I think you have to be really good at your job though or like you have to be pretty um, you have to be pretty good at, I don't know how to put this um, I'm not saying buddy buddies or uh, like maybe accommodation or yeah like kind of like an accommodation by the company that they'll actually pay for your school and you can actually go to school and uh, they'll pay for it um, and, uh, you know, by the time you're out of school, you go back within the company and they'll, um, give you a higher position. I don't know if they necessarily do that. I haven't really looked into it. Um, <coughs> but, um, I'd imagine you have to work at the company for quite a few years though, before they actually kind of do that for you. Um, cause otherwise you just kind of like, it's almost like nutting and then leaving because <laughs> you literally just took that money, went to school, and went to a different company with their money that they just spent on you, hoping that you would come back to their company to work for them. Um, so I don't think that's probably how that works, but that was how I was thinking. <coughs> but anyways, I think that's going to do it for the video. I don't want it to get too lengthy. I just wanted to let you guys know um, that I did get accepted for Valvoline. I'm just expecting a call within a week to three weeks. I haven't put my two weeks in yet at this current job that I'm at. I'm going to wait to make sure I have my first day and um, that it's set in stone because just because you said, oh, yeah, here's the position I accepted doesn't mean I 100% have the job or doesn't 100% mean that I may start the job tomorrow. So I'm waiting for the manager to get back to me about when I should start, um, when, I should start um, when they're ready to have me. Then I'll put in my two weeks and uh, tell them the date in which I will come. Uh, so, yeah. Um, and if I seem a little out of it, um, I keep getting ill. I don't know why. I've been, like, there's some days I feel okay, and then other days I feel really, like, shitty. It's ever since I've moved out here, I keep getting ill. Um, right now I'm dealing with, like, a scratchy throat. And I keep getting these weird dry throats out here, or like these, I keep dealing with like dryness in my throat ever since I've been out here. Um, it's not quite a sore throat, it's just very dry and it kind of hurts to swallow, but not really. And then my sinuses are a little fucked up, so you, every time I go, it's because my sinuses are kind of bugging me. Um, been like this for a few days now i've been sick at least like three or four times since i've moved out here and i've only moved out here for like three months now i've been i haven't been fucking around with anybody so it's nothing like that um it, it's literally just something i don't know we have like mosquito foggers that come in through our neighborhood and i'm beginning to wonder if it's really to fucking poison us because it doesn't do fuck all of the mosquitoes as you can see i'm getting bit the fuck up still doesn't matter where the fuck I go, I'm still getting bit. And it could be the mosquitoes. They got some fucking weird shit on them that they're fucking giving me. I don't know. I'm getting contracted with some shit. Don't know. Um, it's really annoying, though. Um, but anyways, I think that's going to do it for the video. I don't want to make it too lengthy with all that. Um, just I feel kind of shitty. So hopefully I don't get any worse than this. 
Um, I'll let you guys know when my first day is, um, and then I'll have another update video of how my first day was, what to expect, and how it went for me, and what I learned, what they told me, what my job consists of, that kind of that kind of deal. Um, so hopefully this knowledge, if you want to get into the automotive industry, and uh, you know, if I become successful th with this, you're pretty much seeing this. Uh, you know, you're seeing my journey, um, and. I'm taking you for the ride, so maybe if you follow my foot, uh, my footsteps, that maybe it'll help you out. Um, I'm not saying that the way I'm doing this is going to help me. I don't know yet. I'm hoping I become su successful at this um, and that it takes me somewhere. Uh, but, um, yeah, hopefully you guys have a good one, uh, and hopefully I get better, and you guys have a good one. See you in the next video. Peace out.